Welcome in. It's ESPN Louisville Plus. He's the coach, Mark Lieberman. I'm Phil Baker, Justin Sofero. Producing today's events. Appreciate you making us a part of your day here on ESPN Louisville Plus. A wild week of sports. We're going to dive into it. Uh, be sure to give him a follow on Twitter. He's been on about every podcast known to man. So if you don't know who he is, uh, at Coach Lieberman on Twitter, slash X. I'm Phil underscore <laughs> underscore Baker. Uh, maybe when Elon Musk isn't doing Joe Rogan or saying he's going to fight in the Roman Coliseum with uh, Zuckerberg. That's been going on for so long. I know. Are they ever going to do is... it? I can get rid of my double underscore uh, one of these days. Justin so for O on Twitter, too, if you want to give yes. him a follow. I'm sure that will be in the upper left-hand corner of the screen. Coach, how are you? Good. Good. Doing well. I was just, um, we were just talking about someone who works here, and, and uh, Andrew, and Bosch is a good show, by the way. I if anybody s- hasn't seen it, it's a really good show. Is that Amazon Titus Prime? Welliver, I believe, is is the, uh, it's on Amazon Prime. Um, really derailing all of what you were, you, Phil's the best. He's got a whole plan. And I just, I just throw him a curveball right into a, a TV show, Bosch. That's the Recommended beauty. Recommended it 6.43 on the Lieberman meter. That's the beauty of this. We can go all over the place with that. All right, let's start with sports, then we'll get into pop culture. Uh, it's been a wild week. Uh, obviously, Louisville coming in number 13 in the college football standings. We'll get into that. We'll also get into Kentucky feeling like there's uh, the rug slipping out underneath them. We'll yes. talk about that in their games and whatnot. But I'd be remiss. I know uh, Bobby V, as we're recording this, is about to have Jay Billis on head over to the podcast center over on ESPN Louisville.com. Uh, if you missed that interview, but to talk about Bob Knight, uh, obviously just kind of one of the Mount Rushmore's of coaches, a complicated history, I guess a great coach by some, a dictator by others. Obviously the way that things ended in Bloomington, uh, were very interesting, but, uh, it's nice that he was able to return to Bloomington about a year, year and a half ago when yep. Mike Woodson was hired, but just I, any interactions, I don't want to lead you one way or another, any interactions or stories, maybe urban legends you've heard about Bob Knight. I mean, just you hear him speak and the confidence in coaching. When I was a young coach, I will tell you this, Rick Pitino and, and Bob Knight were huge influences on me and just to see him and you got to be yourself in coaching, but the toughness and the stubbornness and the belief in yourself that like that man had, um, it, it was just, it, it oozed out of him. Yeah. He's a complicated figure. And I would say you just mentioned it. Um, go to ESPN and read that article that Jay Billis put up there about his relationship calling him his friend, but also understanding um, the the nuances of having somebody like that as a friend. Um, But to me, an icon, he, he just, his teams just played so hard and the things you hear about him after the fact, you know, the gruffness and so, but how great he was with other coaches, how great he was to the game. He honored the game. Yeah, no, I look, I, I think sometimes, People say, you know, sometimes you need to look around and remind yourself that you're in the good times. And I think as a kid in elementary school, especially in this market, which quite frankly is the Bermuda Triangle with Louisville, Kentucky and Indiana, um, you didn't realize how many icons of the sport were around mm-hmm. there now? I mean, not to get morbid, but I mean, Joe B. Hall passing away mm-hmm. from Kentucky, Denny Crum last year, uh, earlier this year, I should say. And then, uh, now with uh, Bob Knight, it's, mm-hmm. it's kind of closing up a chapter and you know, what it was a prominent time around these parts. And I, I go back to, I mean, it felt like whether I was at a game with the Louisville games or going to a Kentucky game or, you know, not getting up to Indiana as much, but having family members that go up to Bloomington. I mean, those were the premier games when sure. Bob Knight his appointment TV with that and his press conferences uh, were also something that were must see TV. <laughs> oh, game ten. face. Uh, oh, okay. You know, for me, and again, I grew up New York and Miami, so it wasn't, I would see it from afar. Um, but he was definitely the type of guy that you would see. And, and that was must see TV before there was must see TV. Um, if, and I would tell you, just go watch all his YouTube videos now and just watch him talk about Michael Jordan. Um, great story talking about him and the Olympic games. Uh, it's just, he's, he's great. He was great to listen to a guy that I definitely, um, modeled some of my, um, coaching, 
um, mannerisms and whatnot after. Not all, but some. Uh, that's something uh, <laughs> yes. for another day. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't remember throwing chairs. Actually, I did throw a chair in the summer league, so that's not true. Nice. Yes, I did. Was this in Vegas? I was at Monsignor. No, I was at Monsignor Pace High School. Okay. Summer league game. Um, and I, I, I did throw a chair. I did. Yeah. <laughs> when Welcome I to the party. Threw, I, got, <laughs> I, I, I punted a basketball once onto the walking track at the Jewish Community Center. So, I mean, 1A, 1B right there. I mean, if you, who hasn't done that? So, look, we've done that. Bob Knight, thank you. That's uh, the inspiration that you had on us yes. uh, at a coaching level and a recreational subpar average Joe League uh, right there. Uh, next up, look, I'm mean, look, you've been on Twitter nonstop about it, uh, doing some great video breakdown. Like I said, Coach Lieberman on Twitter, if you want to do that, breaking down some plays from the global game. Louisville falls to Kentucky Wesleyan. Obviously, it's rumor season around there. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on that because I'm not going to get into deciphering emojis and whatnot, nor do I expect you to. But just to put a bow on the Louisville Kentucky Wesleyan game um, and just takeaways from it. And again, I, it it's the beauty of this all. They are still 0 and 0 on the on the year. But I think it's a uh, room for concern for a lot of folks out there when you see for the second year in a row losing to uh, Division II school. Yeah. Um, winning is like deodorant. It's going to cover up a lot of the stink if they can find a way to the next three games, UMBC, Chattanooga, and Coppin State, who are all going to present a challenge. And, and that's the thing right now, having this group feeling that they can go out and win. Because you got to believe – Phil, and, and right now, the, that's the biggest thing. I don't know if they know who they are, and that is a huge part of it, having an identity, being able, as Joe Burrow fell again. Yeah, um, that's what we do. Man, he that's, played well though, last yeah, week. He did. It, God, it must, be his, he must be his Achilles. He's fighting through it. So <laughs> shout out to Joe Burrow and body armor. Uh, that is not on you all. That is on us. But continue. We'll, we'll see if, if just some of the things that, that I just really want to see just – if, if you take it in small increments and just become a really good half court defensive team and focus on that, that'll be a sign that there, there, there's building blocks, but, um, you know, I just, um, the jury's out, man. Look, I, I say this all the time. I don't know who this individual is, but I've been told by multiple people who are very close to the sport that Trilly Donovan is, in fact, like a college basketball insider. It always makes me smile when the serious journalists of the world, uh, Eric Crawford's, who I admire and I think does really good work, Kyle Tucker's of the mm -hmm. world with the athletic, all these esteemed journalists quote tweet this individual when he has like the spicy emoji out there. Right. And it just like... Well, that's where we are in 2023, but by multiple people, they say, no, he knows his stuff on that. So I don't want to go into it a ton because I'm not, again, going to play the emoji game and whatnot, but it just feels like when you said with deodorant, we're, I don't want to say there's smoke, there's fire, but it feels like there's some things out there that just aren't heading in the right direction. They have an opportunity against UMBC to kind of rewrite the narrative on that, but uh, a 10 and a half point favorite, thanks to our good friends over at. DraftKings. And that's something that I nice. know a lot of people are uh, kind of gravitating toward is like to take UMBC there. But look, they, they can change the narrative. It is going to be a long season if you were having trouble with Kentucky Wesleyan. And that yeah. is a big concern around. Phil, there's every program I've been in. I've been in in those practices, the locker rooms with players. You're dealing with kids who are 18 to 24. There's there's shit that's going on all the time. Yeah. And there's stuff that that you're just that people just don't know about. Um, and it just, it happens behind closed doors. So I'm not speculating. I'm just, you know, it's exasperated because of what's happening here and they're not winning. Right. So, you know, you're, you, you have a winning program and you hear of something going on at practice or, oh, that's great. There's yeah, a fire there's there. fight, there's fight in there. Yes. And that's something that, yeah, yeah I completely so, agree with that. We'll, we'll see how this plays out. They've just got to figure out a way to be connected, to have a defensive DNA, to play like they understand what they're all doing together and they're not hunting shots and they have an identity. If those things just start eventually kind of matriculating, always want to use that word as many times as possible. Slide it in. And oh, careful there. Um, and uh, 
Yeah, so we'll see how that plays out. All right, switching it up to something. Well, I guess we could go to the Kentucky Kyle uh, Tucker athletic piece, but we'll save that for the roundtable with uh, Strebel and just the quotes that were in that. I know that was uh, some meat on the bone with that. We'll save that for Strebel later today coming up on uh, the roundtable. I'm sure you and Ennis will talk about it as well. All right, let's go to football. Uh, Louisville in a really good headspace after beating Duke. Uh, Obviously kind of the talk of the town with that. Jeff Brom show over on 93.9 The Ville talked about where they came out in the college football playoff range. Rankings at number 13 Mm -hmm. feels like there's if we're talking about basketball, eh, feels like there's a lot of momentum behind the football team. Reminder, our good friends over at J.D. Becker, if you want to win this shirt, be sure to like and subscribe. You can win this Cardinal bird. uh, Hold that sucker up. Look at that sucker. That's about 40, 35, 40 bucks there. So you can win this. Just say this like material wise. Yeah, very comfortable. Good stuff. So if you want to win that, like, subscribe uh, us on ESPN Louisville plus on YouTube. But um this game feels like a lot of people are like Virginia's playing Virginia Tech's playing good. They got a lot of things going mm-hmm. for them. They're still four and four on the year. And I don't believe if I was listening to LSO on the road, they haven't won on the road. Uh, LSO last night, I should say Virginia Tech hasn't won on the road. So seen anywhere from 10 and a half to nine and a half point favor, depending on which sports book you're uh, working with. We're going to go with nine and a half. Thanks to our good friends over. Oh, at- yeah. And we're trying to really uh, see if this is a serious contender. Virginia Tech, I feel like they've done a lot of good things. I've kind of been the rebuild with Pry uh, and what he's been able to do there. But I still think there's a massive talent gap with that, with uh, Louisville. Should take care of business at home. They've been really good at home. What are your thoughts about it? Um, I'd like to go to the uh, and do some breakdowns of the Syracuse-Virginia Tech game because I happened to watch that game. Oh, okay. Um, might have had a little shekel or two. Is shekel, as, as we like to say. Um, they seem one dimensional offensively, um, not a great passing team defensively. I think, and again, it's, it's against Syracuse who just seemed a little overmatched, but seemed like they have a tendency to blitz and pressure and so on, which again, I think a coach like coach Brom can really figure out ways to attack this team in certain ways. And I, I think they will struggle with containing the different things in different ways that, whether it's screen passes and, and those bubble screens and whatnot, that they can attack Virginia Tech that way. And defensively, Louisville's just a monster at home. And one of my team, biggest concerns going into the season was Ron English, man. And I got to shut up about him because he they, has. They are, and, yeah. Yeah, they get done, after it. Yeah, they, they've, they've really impressed me. That was one of the Craig Thorpean uh, fears that I had in my mind with him coming back. But no, he has been nothing but impressive. Right. So I, I don't see a Virginia Tech attack that's going to just over, overwhelm you. Um, offensively. So yeah, um, Louisville in the under. Okay. So you like that right there. Coach said he likes the under right there. Uh, look, I, I think uh, switching up going down I-64, um, by the way, great story sticking with Louisville, I should say last night on the coaches show talking about the uh, fake flea flicker with his wife. Um, that was the one that said, Hey, you should try something like that. And oh, really? knowing that Bobby Petrino was a psychopath and watched uh-huh. every of their, uh, all their, uh, spring games. But one uh-huh. of the reasons like Louisville's wasn't aired. So they were, I'm sorry, Purdue, Louisville wasn't aired on TV, so Brom couldn't watch Petrino and company, but the Big Ten Network had... You should have called Collar Stallions. Yeah, I know. I mean, he, anyway. he's, a, he's available. Yeah. But they, they showed the film during uh, the, the Purdue spring game, and mm-hmm. they just kept saying, flea flicker Petrino. Like, that's what the call yeah. was, because he knew Bobby Petrino would be watching, and he's right. a psychopath. Good that's story funny. there. I encourage you good. to uh, go back and listen to that on uh, 93.9 The Bill. All right, going down the road... I-64, uh, Kentucky, look, it, it, it's the same song and dance with this. I don't know if you saw the video that was going out there of uh, the Tennessee players. Oh, in the tunnel? Trying, in the tunnel. Did you see this? Yeah. What is that? Be still my heart. Yeah. And, and and there's some people out there that are saying that they were praying there. And yeah, we'll take that nice pause there. <laughs> yeah. It's- they were praying there. Let it soak in. Let that marinate for a second. Okay. So, uh, you know, winning out of the last 36, uh, or I'm sorry, losing the last 36 out of last 39 games with, you know, the volunteers taking care of business against Kentucky. I mean, it it just feels like the ultimate fake juice right there. And I get like, you know, you want to play like with the little edge and whatnot, Mm -hmm. but it's like, guys, read the room. So they head to Starkville. Uh, They're five point favorites. Uh, heading down there for that. What do you expect in that game, if anything? Because, I mean, look, their schedule is just going to get more difficult. And and, and I, I don't know what to make of this team um, and, and Mark Stoops program right now. I mean, they have to get that one. That's what I make. I, uh, 
they have to find a way. That's not a very good um, Mississippi State team. They've got to find a way to come out of there. But that's not going to be easy. SEC on the road, I don't care. It's just in the way they're playing right now, it's just it, they've got to – They've gotten out to Leeds. They haven't been able to sustain them. Maybe Mississippi State is the type of team they can do it. God, those stupid cowbells. Oh, All right? God. Oh, Which, just imagine I mean, trying to, like, change the play yeah. call uh, with that. And no matter what, that's going to be raucous. It's going to be to the environment. I'll tell you, it, it's, yeah, it's, it, it's a time where there's a lot of questions for that program. And yeah. they lose that one. I mean, their only focus is trying to come up here and beat be the the Ville. Yeah, no, five and three on the year, Kentucky, Mississippi State, four and four uh, on the year. The schedule. Give me, uh, give me your uh, your pick on that one. Yeah, look, I, I think they go down there and edge one out just because. I mean, they'll get bowl. El- I, I have to think they're going to get bowl eligible this year. Mark Stoops is a top ten paid coach. Uh, if he does not. I mean, what's the discussion we're having here? Because it's like you're a top 10 paid coach. I, I have a group of Kentucky friends. I say this all the time that are perfectly content with just going to the sister Mary of the South Harmon Institute of Technology Bowl and, and they don't care. And mm-hmm. then others that are like, no, we want more. Mm-hmm. And I think if you're a top 10 paid coach, you should expect top 10 paid results occasionally, not year in and year out. Well, occasionally. Every coach, you have to have high expectations. Yeah, exactly. And, and you can't lower your standards. You have to expect to win. You have to expect that. You're going to go get better exponentially every single game, every season. That, that's a standard. So to my, I think Kentucky will win uh, maybe by three. I don't like the five points there. Okay. Uh, I, I would say by a field goal because, look, you got Alabama next week. You got South Carolina, who seems to be in a free-for-all. Uh, Beamer broke his foot kicking something. They're two and six <laughs> right. on the year. And, look, I mean, quite frankly – where Louisville's trending. Mm -hmm. Um, and I know Kentucky has had the upper advantage in the preseason predictions. Like I got to see Louisville beat Kentucky to believe it. But Mm -hmm. what I have seen thus far and how Brahm has flipped the switch on this, um, I'm going all in on Louisville now. I'm doing a complete 180 on that. So, uh, I look, I think they'll get the bowl eligibility, whether that six or seventh win is there. Vegas, I think had it early season, Kentucky going seven and five. Right. I think it's going to be flirting right around there. Maybe the, it looks like they're going to steal one from uh, South Carolina. All right. Switching it up. Um, we'll go to some other, well, let's go to an NFL game or is there, I, I should ask you, is there a game that excites you this week and that you're looking forward to? It can be college or NFL I mean, chiefs and dolphins. Okay. Yeah. The, I mean, the nine 30 game fantasy football, uh, be sure to set your lineups. Those nine 30 games can sneak up on oh, you they, sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. How, so, how, about that one that right should, shout out the just, shout out the frankfurt for getting those i mean right. the frankfurt games on getting that i mean that's gonna be so is that supposed to be a chief's home game right i think so damn that sucks for, for uh for yeah, yeah for they, sure. so that's gonna be a fun uh, one Nine. Yeah, yeah you know and mahomes just not you know he was trying to pull the jordan last game not feeling well you know he's gonna come out and just I mean, oh, yeah. I'd take the over on 600 yards of uh, offense by the Chiefs. Kansas City favored by uh, one and a half right there, trying to find. Over under 93. Uh, over, yeah, no kidding, right? Uh, I'm trying to find the over under. It's doing the facial recognition thanks to our great friends over at. Oh, and yeah, I think that uh, is in the ballpark of that while I'm trying to get the signal back here. I'm trying to find <laughs> my app. But no, we'll, we'll dive into Is there a college game you're looking forward to? Um. I'm, I'm, I'm going to start this weekend and you, you, we were talking about it earlier with college basketball. Um, I'm really going to start watching some, some of the um, uh, exhibition games, scrimmages and teams from last year, just to get a good feel, get a, a, a real read on some of the transfers. Um, so most of my Saturday probably just, I'll watch the Louisville game, but uh, I, I plan on just doing my little, little basketball research this weekend. Okay. So uh, thank you for, to our great friends over at, we have found the over under that is 50 and a half uh, for the over under. And that's, I know that's a little low scoring right there. Maybe I'm sorry, 50 and a half. Wow. So you like the over right there. Uh, you think yes. it's going to be high scoring yes. right there. Okay. Uh, let's go to some college football games uh, that we are looking at. I'm over here. I, look, I, I'm thinking out loud um, with some of the games that um, are coming up this weekend. If I can pull these up top 25. Okay. So we got Louisville, Virginia tech. We talked about can 
Kansas State, Texas should be a fun one. That's a top 25 matchup. Mm-hmm. The brand equity. They're uh, always for, Kansas State, man. They're sneaky. always underrated. I know. And they just find ways. They're well coached. They're always you look at you look at the scores. It's like 24 seven right. in the third quarter, Kansas State. And it usually ends up like 38 10 or something like that. So that should be a fun one as well. Notre Dame at Clemson, ABC noon, four and four. Clemson has a ton of answers getting snippy with the caller on the post game show. Great. Missouri, uh, number 12, Missouri, Georgia. That is the 330 game on CBS. Florida mm-hmm. State travels to the fight in Pat Narduzzi's. I have no idea if he's lost that um, locker room after some of the comments that he made about needing to get better players. Mm-hmm. Uh, that'll be a fun one to watch. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, 330 ABC. So if you're driving around, I'm sure we'll carry some of those games. in Washington, USC, that should be a fun one. Sure. Uh, uh, Coach Brom just every day just walks around. It's like, how the bleep did we lose did the did we lose Jawar Jordan I think is the reason for that uh all right pop culture and put a bow on this show what is a show is is there a new show you're watching or recommending that you want the masses to listen to or watch I should say to to you know that's a there's a there's not a lot of content out right right now because of the the strike and whatnot I did mention I don't know if I mentioned on the last show Flora and Son yes on did. Apple TV um I mentioned last sh- last episode too and if it, if I did, yeah, like with the bear, Re- yeah, go for it. Watch it. It's a very heartwarming, very, uh, very enjoyable movie. Um, what else is out there right now? I, I saw uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. Um, you better carve out the day. And uh, I would tell you, go online and find out when you could take your, your bathroom breaks. Um, very good movie. Tremendous p- performance by uh, um, by Leo and, and De Niro. Um but about three hours and 40 minutes. Whew, be so, sure to. Yeah, it's got to be like, yeah, go see it at like noon or one o'clock. Yeah, that sure. that is a long one right there. Uh, Into but the Spider-Verse on Netflix, look too. At that, I yeah. know, I, I, yeah. I'm really enjoying that because I didn't get to see it in theaters. Mm-hmm. So I started watching it and then I was like, you know what? I, I need to be in the. Men- I get so upset with you. With I know, the, with the, I know, I know. I, the, not going to see it in the I theaters. know, it's, I, I'm the reason I, look, it's, a, it's Village 8 closed. That was my go to. I know I could count on the mall's a great setup. I got to get better at it it's a me problem i'm making excuses it's a me problem i look I, i'm acknowledging it justin's giving us uh, um some some dirty looks i'm not okay. sure if he's happy with, with i our, can't see him at all our, because our the lights are so <laughs> bright right now by the way he Jay, looks like a sith lord back there. he does look, uh, jason siegel uh doing forgetting sarah marshall's dracula's uh song he did it oh. at like a little bar did you see this no i saw him do it in the rehearsal uh they had mina kuna Cool. Kunis. Kunis, right? <laughs> Say with confidence, I would have agreed with you. And Kristen Bell were like, they were next to him and he was doing it in rehearsal and they were just cracking up as he was doing no, it. No, he did it like at a hole in the wall bar oh, over the weekend. so great. That's I, perfect. Great, but, look, great movie. If you get nothing out of this episode, that right there, I, I can't wait to go uh, YouTube this one and watch it. I was going to dive into the uh, Tupac uh, killer apparently pleaded not guilty to murder and Kim Kardashian signing an official deal with the NBA for skims. Uh, coach will maybe have a follow up to that. I've coming got up a next lot week. of thoughts on that. Next All week. right, let's wrap it up. He's the coach, Mark Lieberman. I'm Phil Baker, Justin Sofro producing today's event. Appreciate our friends over at JD Becker. Look you, at that. Look, look at that. At that. Be sure to like, subscribe, uh, show proof in a tweet, uh, comment on this. You'll be entered to win one of these shirts. They're about $35 uh, to $40 on there. So uh, for the coach, Mark Lieberman, Justin, I'm Phil. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that fucking bell. We'll talk to you next time. Very Bob Knight-esque.